Hello, everybody, it's me again, not you. And welcome back to my replay of Assassin's Creed 2. We just finished collecting all the remaining codex pages. Fucking my life, goddammit, fuck. Son of a bitch, I thought I lost these guys. And we're gonna head back to Monte de Gione to put them on the wall and do that agonizing puzzle as soon as I lose these fucking guards. What? It's a notification for my Assassin's Creed Pirates app. All right, we're clear. Back to Monteregione. We have all the uh, 30 todos codex pages, codex paginas. I think that's how you say it. Probably not. To the codex room, Leonardo. Give me more health upgrades or something, please. Leonardo. Hello. Ezio, so good to see you. How can I help you? By deciphering Aha, those codex, please. You found another one. How exciting. I wonder what he gives me this time. Is it just another health square? Maybe? Oh, I could use that. A numerical substitution and a language shift. Give me a moment. It's done. Okay, sweet. You work fast. Nine code expansion to cyber. Those are the ones I just collected. Three health squares gained. Fuck yeah! Thank you, Leonardo. You're the best. Alright, let's go talk to him. Hello. Sorry to keep you guys waiting so long, but traveling between cities takes a fucking long time. There we go. It's you. Salve, Uncle. It is time, Uncle. Let us finish what you and my father started all those years ago. Indeed. Perhaps now we can finally make sense of this prophecy and put a stop to whatever it is the Spaniard is plotting. We should start by locating the vault. The Codex pages will lead us to it. Mm. Let's take a look. Mm. Dog hair on my nose. Okay. X marks the spot. <laughs> Decipher the Codex pages to discover the location <laughs> of the vault. All right, now I know it makes a world map. Rodrigo Borgia, let's go ahead and read about him. Rodrigo Borgia, AKA the Spaniard. Wait, did we read this already? A dark stain on human history. Rodrigo left a trail of blood a mile wide on his quest to unify Italy under the Templar banner. Anyone who opposed him ended up in little pieces inside a sack, or if he was in a good mood, poisoned. Once he was crowned Pope, Rodrigo, or should I say Alexander VI, used his influence to wage war with any city that held out against the Templars. Florence. And then there were the rumored X-rated atrocities. Hundreds of courtesans brought to the Vatican by the cartload and the Pope's close friendship with his illegitimate daughter, Lucrezia. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. And did I mention the killings never stopped? Throughout all his public debauchery, Rodrigo was quietly murdering his enemies behind the scenes, consolidating Templar power for the moment when they would seize control. Yeah. Dude, I don't remember that about Lucrezia. Oh, that is messed up. That is some Game of Thrones shit right there. Hello, Walder Frey. How are you? Ugh. All right. Well, that's nice. <sighs> All right, here we go. We already read about Antonio. Here we go. Have I read about all of you? Read about Antonio, read about Teodora, and Bar Bartolomeo, and Paolo. Paola, excuse me. I've read about all of you now. Okay. I'm so good. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Woo! Okay. Eagle Vision. And I haven't been reading them! Okay, wait, hold on. Let's go ahead and let's do this and let's read all of them. I don't think I've read this one. What follows are the three great ironies of the Assassin Order. One, here we seek to promote peace, but murder is our means. Two, here we seek to open the minds of men, but require obedience to a master instead of rules. Three, here we seek to reveal the danger of blind faith, yet we are practitioners ourselves. I have no satisfactory answer to these charges, only possibilities. Do we bend the rules in service to a greater good? And if we do, what does it say of us? That we are liars? That we are frauds? That we are weak? Every moment is spent wrestling with these con contradictions, and in spite of all the years I've had to reflect, still I can find no suitable answer, and I fear that one may not exist. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Does our creed provide the answer, then? That one may be two things, opposite in every way, simultaneously? And why not? Am I not proof? 
We of noble intentions, possessed of barbaric means. We who celebrate the sanctity of life and then promptly take it from those we deem our enemies. He's such a wise badass and I fucking love him. Robert de Saab may be dead, but his brotherhood survives. Though less conspicuous in appearance, I fear they remain a threat. Where once they proudly walked the streets, making for easier targets, now they retreat into the shadows. It grows difficult to track them. What wicked things will they weave in the darkness? Our work will be all the more complicated for it. Already there are rumors of a movement on Cyprus. I will have to investigate. I believe that is in Project Legacy and also The Secret Crusade. The book by Oliver Bowden, which is fantastic, by the way. It's made me realize that our tactics, too, must change. It means an end to our fortresses, to our penchant for spectacular displays of public assassinations. We must weave our webs quietly, and we must do so differently than we have in the past. Though I ask my brothers now to abandon their rituals, I do not ask that they abandon the creed. This is what makes us assassins. Not the removal of a finger, not a false promise of paradise, not the prohibition of poison. Our duty is to the people, not to custom. If we must sneak, we shall sneak. If we must use poison, we shall use poison. If our blades can be used without removing fingers, we shall not demand they be taken. And we shall not manipulate our initiates with lies and parlor tricks. We shall speak plainly and honestly. We shall be made anew. That reminds me a lot of the premise I'm using for my fanfiction, just to hint you guys. Heh, heh, heh. Keep an eye on my DeviantArt. I'll be posting it on my Facebook and my Twitter whenever I upload a new memory chapter thing. But yeah, that reminds me a lot of the premise I'm using for my fanfiction, which is exciting! Okay. I had thought Ada, Ada would be the one to lead me to rest, that I might lay down my blade and live as a normal man. But now I know such dreams are best left to sleep. Who's Ada? Her face. I try to- Oh no, wait! Didn't they say Altair used to be married before? Earlier on, I think? Before he met Maria? He had some sort of love interest. I don't know if they were married, but, like, he had a love interest. And I think her name was Ada, if I remember correctly. Her face. I try to banish it from my mind as I remember the days and nights during which I chased her Templar captors across the sea. I almost- Almost got to them in time. Almost. If I'd only been faster. Instead, I held her lifeless body in my arms, saw the terror reflected in her fixed, unblinking eyes. Oh my god! This guy! Oh, his life sucks! Connor, I think Altair's got you beat, buddy! I hunted each man, one by one, until all responsible were gone from the world. But there was no joy in this. No satisfaction or release. Their deaths did not bring her back, did not heal my wounds. After that, I was certain I would never again feel for a woman as I had for her. You hadn't met Maria yet, sir. I am fortunate to have been wrong. Yes! Oh my god, so many feels! Oh god! Why do our instincts insist on violence? I've studied the interactions between different species. The innate desire to survive seems to demand the death of the other. Why can they not stand hand in hand? So many believe the world was created by the hand of a divine power, but I see only the designs of a madman bent on celebrating destruction and desperation. Our origins seem chaotic, unintended, purpose, purpose and being instilled solely by the passage of time, imposed first by nature, and later men. Human race corrupts everything! I read that one. Addis, Dionysus, Horus, Krishna, Mithra, Jesus. Similar stories color their lives. Too similar, I think. Divine birthright, persecution, disciples, miraculous acts, resurrection. How is it possible? Perhaps it isn't. Merely a single story told over the ages, borrowed, then changed to fit the times, evolving as our tools and language do. Is this tale born of fact or fiction? A bit of both? Could these figures be the same person, their life, life extended and transformed by a piece of Eden? al Malim spoke of Jesus as a real person, a mortal who had mastered the arts of manipulation, and I think the Shroud of Eden is what's responsible for bringing him back to life. It's like a piece of cloth that like has healing powers or something. And it resurrected Jesus, if I remember correctly. But what if he was wrong? If these men are real, and if they have waked, um, walked among us many times before, does it mean they'll come again? Is that a reference to a sage in the second game of the entire damn franchise? Perhaps they are here now. So many questions, and every day, even more. Is that a... Ooh. That could be a very subtle reference to a sage for future games. Man seeks dominion over all that he encounters. I suppose it's a natural ten tendency for us to aspire towards mastery of our surroundings, but this should not include other human beings. 
every day more and more are pressed into service, by deception or by force. Others, though not so firmly imprisoned, are made to feel as if their lives are worthless. I've seen the ways in which men persecute women, heard the cruel word, words hurled at those who come here from other lands, watched as those who believe or act differently are made to suffer. He's right. We discuss such things often, watching as we do from the spires of Masyaf. What can be done to stop this, to encourage tolerance and equality? Some days we speak of education, believing that knowledge will free us from immortality. But as I walk the streets and see slaves sent off to auction, my heart grows cold. When I see the husband hurl abuses and stones at his wife, insisting she exists only to serve him, my fists clench. And when I see children torn from their parents so that another man might profit, sent to suffer beneath the desert sun and die. On these days, I do not think that dialogue will make a difference. On these days, I can think only of how the perpetrators need to die. Otto Wale said something similar about slavers. And he said that he'd hoped that men of education would be made to see the error of their ways eventually, but profit makes them ignorant. Of all the things I've seen, none troubles me more than the image of the flames. Pillars so tall they seem to pierce the heavens. The ground rumbled and shuddered. Mountains split and crack. Great metal towers splintered, their innards strewn about the ground. And elsewhere there was screaming. A chorus so terrible that even now I feel its echo still. What is this madness I've seen? Is it them, I wonder? Those who came before? Is this where they went? Into the fire? Into the dust? Perhaps this destructive power is what the Templars seek, that they might hold it over us and command devotion. What hope would we have, then, if they held such darkness in their hands, that they could murder the world? Yeah. We are obligated to hide, to be silent, to shape the course of history in secret. But some of my brothers and sisters disagree. They show angry. They grow angry, insisting it is a mistake to shroud themselves. They say it slows our work. But they do not understand the risks. To expose ourselves now would be too dangerous. I fear we would be branded madmen and attacked. So it goes, so it always has. If there is one thing I know for certain, it is that men do not learn by being told. Instead, they must be shown. Very, very true. They must make the connections themselves. If I say unto a man to be kind, be tolerant, be of an open mind, these words will wither and die long before they've effected change. It would be a waste. And so we must maintain our course. Legend speaks of a golden fleece. Could the two be re related? What two things related? I further refined the metallurgic process, allowing for the production of a suit of armor the likes of which the world has never seen. It is possessed of great strength, yet so light as to allow complete freedom. I alternate between wonder and fear. Here we have crafted something that will surely change the face of warfare, making those who wear it nigh invincible. <laughs> For now. Perhaps it was a mistake to create these pieces. I think it best to erase the formula. What if it were to fall into the hands of our enemies? The risk is too great. Well, and also, if you upgrade the armor, the weapons upgrade run along with it, and then everything just gets more and more destructive. What to make- Oh, this is the map we saw at the end of the first game! What to make of this map? It appears to contain the entire world. Not flat as they claim either, but round, like a ball, like the apple. But how is such a thing even possible? Stranger still are the lands it, are the lands it shows, great patches of the unknown, the unexplored. So many places yet to be discovered. Are there men there? Are they like us? And if not, different how? I should like to know the answers. Perhaps, in time, I'll have the chance to travel, to chart a course and make my way to these distant lands. I fear it was not in the cards, I'll tell you. Oh, God. Some days I miss my family, or at least the thought of them. I never knew my parents well, despite them both having lived within these walls. It was our way. Perhaps they were sad, though they showed no sign. It was not allowed. Yeah, the, the very beginning of the Secret Crusade is about the day that uh, Altair's father was executed. It's really sad. For my part, so much of my youth was spent in training. There was little time to reflect upon the separation. And so when they were finally lost to me, it seemed no different than the passing of two strangers. Al-Mualim had been as my father, and his was a weak and dishonest love. Though at the time it seemed enough. Better even. Or so I thought. Someday I will have a child, such as the way of our order, and I will not make the same mistake nor any who call themselves an assassin. We shall be allowed to love our children, and in turn to be loved. Al-Mualim believed such attachments would weaken us, cause us to all falter when our lives were on the line. But if we truly fight for what is just, does love not make such sacrifice simpler, knowing what we do so for their gain? Knowing that we do so for their gain. A very good point. I've always said, valuing life and loving people, it's not a weakness. It's a strength. That's the portrait of Maria. 
I have the answer now. I know the truth. I shall not touch that wretched thing again. Best that no one do, now or ever. I have tried at last to destroy it, but it will neither bend, nor break, nor melt. Oh, the irony. I am certain if I ask, the apple would tell me what need be done. But even this promise is insufficient. Always it holds one more gift to give. I must refrain, so it shall be sealed. We will take it to the island, once theirs, now ours. There's a treasury there, hidden well, and it shall have to suffice. Risky to separate myself from the artifacts that others may discover it. Riskier still to keep it close. In time, I will be tempted. I am weak. We all are. Who wouldn't be? Oh, the things I've seen. The tale is here, inside the text. Not between the lines, but beneath them, where only your eyes might peer. Go and see it for yourself, that you might succeed where I and the others have failed. Excuse me. Time marches on, bringing it with new discoveries and developments. And so at least one se so at least one day, the doorway might be opened and the message delivered. They will have their profit. Oh my god. Altair indirectly talking to Ezio. How freaking cool is that? We are growing larger. More make their way to our fortresses every day. Men and women, young and old, from different lands of different faiths. Each tells a similar story of having discovered the first part of our creed, that nothing is true. Too often, though, the, re the revelation undoes them. They lose their morality, certainty, security. Many are driven mad. We must guide them, help them to heal. Their minds must not be filled with more fairy tales, but with knowledge instead. Let them have answers, and let those answers be difficult and complex, such as life. Almost done, you guys! A dark tide rises to the east, an army of such such size and power that all the land is made quick with worry. Their leader is a man named Temu Jin, who has adopted the title Genghis Khan. Khan! <laughs> he sweeps across the lands, conquering and sub subsuming all who stand in his way. Whatever his motives, he must be stopped. Were I younger, I might attempt to undertake this work in secret, as I suspect the presence of a piece of Eden. But those days are, but those days are years gone now. The mantle must be passed. It is time that I spoke with our sons. We must travel there together, that they may be tested and that this threat might be stopped. And I think I read the last one. Yeah, I read that one. I want to read it again, though. Soon I shall pass from this world. It is my time. All the hours of the day are now colored by the thoughts and fears born of this realization. I know that the elements of my body will return to the earth. But what of my consciousness? My identity? That is to say, what of me? I suspect it will end. That there is no next world. Nor a return to this one. It will simply be done. Forever. Our lives are so brief and unimportant. The cosmos cares nothing for us. For what we've done. Had we wrought evil instead of good, had I chosen to abuse the apple instead of seal it away, none of it would have mattered. There is no counting, no reckoning, no final judgment. There is simply silence and darkness, utter and absolute. And so I've begun to wonder, might there not be a way to stop, or at least delay, death's embrace? Surely the ones who came before were not so frail and feeble as we, but I have sworn to be done with the artifact, to not gaze into its core. Still, faced as I am with a prospect of my end, what harm is there in one last look? Yeah. And that's when he made that final memory, I think, for the- no. Maybe he did have the- he must have had the prophecy disc with him in there at that time, because that's where Ezio found it. Oh boy. So many feels. Alright, let's go ahead and do this puzzle now. Um, god, that hurts. Um, how do I move them exactly? Oh, I don't move them, I just rotate them. Okay, well that makes this a shit ton easier. Let me just do the frame first. Because that's how everyone does all puzzles, right? <laughs> they always do the frame first. Okay. Frame is done. And now the rest. It looks right! Doesn't it? One of these pieces is out of place, I just can't locate- Oh wait, no, here it is, it's upside down. There we go! A map of the entire world, but there are lands shown here that do not exist. Apparently to your knowledge, I imagine they've yet to be discovered or rediscovered.
How is this possible? Perhaps the vault will hold the answer. Do you see where it is, then? No. It can't be. The vault. It looks like the vault is in Roma. Then the Spaniard. This is why he became Pope. Now I understand. It's not the vault alone he's gained access to, but the staff as well. Indeed. What staff? The Codex always spoke of two keys. Two pieces of Eden needed to open the vault. One is the apple. And the other is the staff. The papal staff is the second piece of Eden. <laughs> For years, no, decades, we've sought these answers. I and serve you as my prophet. Last, we have them. But so too could the Spaniard. And if he does, if he finds a way into the vault, its contents will make the apple seem a trifling thing. I must go to Roma and find the vault. Yes, indeed. What are the rest of you? We'll do what we do best. Cause some trouble in the city, giving you the freedom to conduct your search. Grazie. Just let me know when you are ready, Nipote. I'm ready right now! Let's do this shit! Um, let's see. It's actually, I gotta, I gotta pause it, you guys! That actually took a long time to read through all those codex pages. This episode might be a little short, but I'm gonna go, yeah. I mean, this is the end of the game. I think either next episode or the episode after that is gonna be the ending. Woo! It's so exciting! I'm finally gonna finish this playthrough! So I hope you guys are enjoying my replay of Assassin's Creed 2. Like and favorite if you are, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you in the potential finale of this playthrough. Farewell, friends. Someone's in a bed! Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck!